vaccination for all. The new vaccine strategy raises questions, beginning with the center giving up its control over the market for vaccines. Just when the spread of COVID-19 has reached catastrophic proportions, with the daily case load rising faster than that seen anywhere in the world since the beginning of the novel coronavirus pandemic, the government of India has acted by unveiling a completely revamped vaccine strategy. Two key elements are the hallmark of this new strategy, which will be implemented from May 1st. First, the phased rollout of the vaccination drive initiated on January 16th under which the vaccine-eligible sections of the population were gradually increased, has now been extended to the entire adult population, namely, to those above 18 years. Second, and more importantly, a significant deregulation of the vaccine market has been affected and vaccine manufacturers have the freedom to sell 50% of their vaccine production to state governments and private hospitals, and at prices that can be substantially higher than that hitherto fixed by the government. A third element of the vaccine strategy, which was not announced formally, is a grant of 45 billion rupees to the two vaccine manufacturers, the Serum Institute of India, SII, and Bharat Biotech, to boost their capacities. Handing over the reins. The new vaccine strategy raises a number of questions, not the least from the manner in which the central government has given up its control over the market for vaccines, a key feature of the vaccine rollout plans thus far. This issue assumes further significance since the government of India is well aware, as all public authorities around the world are, about the significance of vaccinating every citizen in the country. None of us will be safe until everyone is safe. It is, therefore, vitally important that public health authorities in the country take an objective view of the realities of the country before adopting strategies for vaccine availability, for this is absolutely critical for resetting lives and livelihoods disrupted by the pandemic. Several facts suggest that this has not done while rejigging the extant vaccine strategy. Vaccine exports the phased rollout of the government's ambitious vaccination drive, beginning with health care and frontline workers in January, followed by the gradual inclusion of senior citizens and people above 45 years in March and April, respectively, was in sync with the availability of vaccines in the country. Although SII, the largest vaccine producer, had initially promised to supply 100 million doses of vaccines a month, in reality it could provide between 50 million to 60 million doses. But, given that India too saw a degree of vaccine skepticism, the government of India found itself in a situation where it could promise exports of vaccines to 95 countries, mostly in Africa and Asia. As of April 26, these countries have received more than 66.4 million doses of vaccines from India. Until now, nearly 142 million vaccine doses have been administered in the country, the third highest in the world. However, in terms of population share, less than 2% has received both vaccine doses, while less than 9% has received one dose. But there is one worrying facet, which is that a demand-supply mismatch has begun to appear as the coverage of the vaccine-eligible population expanded. The largest supplier, SII, gave two explanations for its inability to meet its commitments. The first was that the United States government had used a Cold War piece of legislation, the Defense Production Act, to restrict exports of vaccine culture and other essential materials. Second, the company complained that it lacked the financial capacity to expand its production, requesting a grant of 30 billion rupees from the government.